and I seen my sister-in-law run out the house and I heard a pop and I seen her run out the house, I just, I didn't know what to do. He wasn't sleeping. He was like, every time my mama would tell him to lay down, he'd be like, all right, mama, all right, all right, all right. Like he wasn't himself. My brother was sick. My brother was going through something. Life is like the weather. It can be sunny one moment, then suddenly turn stormy the next. This episode is a two-in-one, so be sure to watch until the end. Around 12.50 p.m. on February 5th, 2024, a vehicle carrying three individuals arrived at Ashner's Kenna Hospital with an obvious emergency. The vehicle had a shattered window and discharge holes in the doors. 18-year-old Melvin McClinton Jr. had been struck multiple times by discharges. As medical personnel attempted to save his life, police were called to the hospital to investigate. They immediately ran into a roadblock, however, as the other two individuals refused to cooperate with law enforcement. Putting the pieces together, investigators soon realized that there was a connection to a discharge incident that occurred that same day in the 1600 block of 42nd Street. Sadly, despite efforts, McClinton Jr. succumbed to his injuries and was pronounced gone at the hospital, marking the first homie in Kenna, Louisiana in 2024. Captain Michael Cunningham later stated that officers were investigating the incident, suspecting that the 18-year-old was specifically targeted and emphasized that it was not a random act of violence. The following day, 19-year-old Jerome Crimmins was identified as a prime suspect and a search warrant was executed via a SWAT role at a residence in the 1600 block of Newport Place. Although Jaron was not present during the search, with the help of his father, he voluntarily surrendered himself to the authorities shortly afterward. During the search of the apartment, uh, Mr. Kremen's father had reached out to us through our communications department, uh, who talked to him, and uh, he agreed to turn his son in later that, that evening. The investigation is far from over. We think there are going to be other charges forthcoming. Police Chief Keith Conley says the work is far from over as police will stay in the area to patrol. Still remain vigilant in the area. Uh, we met with the city this morning with the code enforcement officials and the mayor's office, and we're going to start really cleaning that area up. Crimmins was charged with multiple offenses, including first-degree fatality and two counts of aggravated assault. Criminal Commissioner Paul Schneider subsequently ordered the 19-year-old to be held without bail at the Jefferson Parish Correctional Center in Gretna. Following his arrest, more details about the incident were released to the public. According to Captain Cunningham, the attack on McClinton occurred during what investigators believed to be a narcotics deal turned sour. The incident appeared isolated and there were indications that the victim, the other occupants of the vehicle and the suspect all knew each other. Kenna police also shared that they expected to make additional arrests as a part of the investigation. WDSU obtained surveillance video that Kenner police say captures 19-year-old Jerome Crimmins opening fire on a car, kill 18-year-old Melvin McClinton Monday afternoon. In the video, you can see a silver car pulls up on 42nd Street. Crimmins approaches it and seconds later, police say he fires shots into the back seat. He runs away and the car speeds off. And I was like, kind of, you know, shocked of what was that? And she said it just sounded like guts just going off. Wow, you never know who you have around you or what could be right across the way. The passenger in the back had two or three gunshot wounds. Chief Carley says McClinton was in the back seat with two friends sitting in a car near an apartment complex on 42nd Street when he was downed. The vehicle came into the, to the neighborhood. Um, the subject came out from the Newport area. Car went up 
to that subject. The subject leaned in the back window, at which time there was some conversation. Uh, and then the subject pulled out a weapon and started firing into the car at close range. We're told it's possible everyone involved knows each other. This is not a random sh We believe that the victim knew the uh, leader. Uh, so we're just trying to, to further develop uh, more of a motive than that. Neighbors shared this area has had problems with gang-related issues in the past and have recently seen disturbances. Kenner Police does not believe this incident is gang-related. We have had complaints and investigations. We've developed information that there are some gang, acti some gang activities in there in the past. Um, just the last two weeks, it's really kind of flared up with some reports of fires, some, uh, some loud disturbances. When the officers get there, there's no scene. Anyone with relevant information is asked to contact Kenna Police or Crime Stoppers using the information displayed on the screen. Melvin McClinton Jr. was laid to rest on February 24th. His family members, especially his parents, had struggled with the fact that he was really gone. Are you His father took to social media as an outlet. In the comments under McClinton Sr.'s Facebook Lives and posts, people were observed telling him how strong he was while others expressed their concern over how the grief appeared to be affecting the father. It appeared he had been struggling mentally and emotionally. We're calm. Man, I, I, I work. Man. Oh no, messing, uh, messing around on my phone. I said just messing around on my phone. I see a star and I always wonder what the stars mean. And a baby. On February 28th, Jerome Crimmins appeared in Jefferson Parish Magistrate Court for a preliminary hearing in his first degree fatality case. A detective told the court that text messages showed that the 19-year-old had arranged to meet up with one of McClinton's friends for a narcotics deal. Court records also showed that Crimmins was previously arrested in April and August of 2023. Charges from those instances included resisting arrest, possession of a firearm, illegal possession of stolen items, and more. Hours after the preliminary hearing, the mother of McClinton Sr.'s youngest son, three-year-old Carmelo McClinton, went to the man's home on 27th Street in Kenner's Susan Park neighborhood. Around 7 p.m., the parents began arguing over the boy's discipline. Carmelo was also in the room at the time, and the dispute quickly turned physical. McClinton's brother, who was also at the home, had decided to go outside, never expecting what would happen next. Moments later, Carmelo's mother ran out of the home as discharge sounds rang out. 39-year-old Melvin McClinton Sr. then walked outside.
and wounded himself in the head with a firearm. Emergency responders rushed to the scene where they found the man laying outside in an unresponsive and critical state. When police entered the home, heartbreakingly, they found three-year-old Carmelo gone. Witnesses told officers that in addition to his mental and emotional struggles since his oldest son's passing, Melvin Sr.'s behavior had become even more erratic and aggressive following the teen's funeral four days prior. Out, shot a three-year-old in the head, um, and then went out into the driveway and shot himself in the head. Uh, the, the, the child was deceased on the scene upon officer's arrival, and the father uh, was res non-responsive and was taken to an area hospital. Was the child a boy or girl? It was a male. Where's the mother? The mother's with the family. How is the, um, the man doing? Like, is he still... He's still unresponsive, is what the, the last report we had. Was the mother able to give you any information on how this happened? The mother cooperated with the investigators. Can you describe kind of the emotion and scene when you guys got there? Well, it's, you know, this is a, a, a tragedy. It was a very emotional scene for, for not just the family members, but the neighbors that all knew the child. So it's... It's one of those um, one of those moments that that neighborhood will never forget. Of course, this case highlights the mental health crisis, domestic violence crisis. Can you speak to that a little bit? Well, it, you know, it, it's the old theory in law enforcement: if you see something, say something. If you know somebody's going through, through some trouble, trouble times, please get them the help they need. Uh, this escalated quickly. By the time officers arrived on the scene. Uh, the ch child was already deceased, and the, the father of the child was in a, dri in a driveway suffering from a self-inflicted gunshot wound. Can you tell us a little bit about the response time as well? I know very close to police headquarters. Yeah, no, the, the officers, the initial units got there almost immediately after we received the call. Uh, and before five to six minutes, we probably had eight or nine units there. Can you speak to any motive at this point? It sounds like there was some kind of argument, but was there a motive for shooting up to the child? Uh, from what the inv investigation revealed was there was a domestic disturbance over the father's disciplining of the child. Uh, so we think that might have triggered him to um, escalate into that act of violence. Did the mother and father have any other domestic incidents where police were called to this address before? I don't have any of that information. Right. Um, if you could just uh, kind of yeah. give us a little information to that. Wasn't it the first homicide? That was the yeah. first homicide uh, for 2024 in Canada. That was February 5th. He was a young man that was in a vehicle and on the 42nd Street. And just something like this that he was clearly suffering from that happening, right? Right. His family did indicate that his uh, emotions and his anger issues were were coming forward a lot more aggressive since that incident. Just for clarification, the relationship between the man and the woman, were they dating at the time? Do you not have that information? I don't know. And was he the father of the baby? He was the father of the baby is the information we have. Anything else that you would like to add? No, just, you know, keep this family and that community and your thoughts and prayers. Um, you know, this is just one of those tragedies, unfortunately, that, that happened. And, um, you know, we're just, we're just wishing the best for him. And when I see him, my sister-in-law went out the house, and I heard a pop, and I seen her run out the house. I just, I didn't know what to do. I just didn't know what to do, right? Emotional videos posted on social media show Melvin McClinton grieving the loss of his 18-year-old son. My brother was crying out. He was on Facebook. He was talking. He was telling people, like, we have to change. The tragedy of a life taken too soon and the pain from a loss that McClendon's brother, Thomas Williams, believes was too much for him to bear. All the pressure you put on a human, a human can only take so much. A person can only take so much. My brother was sick. My brother was going through something. A sickness that family tells police McClendon had been battling since his oldest son was killed earlier this month, which left him in an emotional spiral. He wasn't sleeping. He was like, every time my mom would tell him to lay down, he'd be like, all right, mom, all right, all right, all right. Like he wasn't himself. Like my brother's just, 
My brother is just the, the pressure of all the stuff from him losing his child. In these events and circumstances... Dr. Reggie Parquet is a clinical social worker specializing in community violence. He never assessed or treated Melvin McClinton, but says in some cases, trauma from losing a loved one can cause people to dissociate from reality and act out of character. Sometimes these individuals uh, will actually detach themselves from reality. Uh, they, they, they aren't able to recognize real situations in front of them. William says on Wednesday night, his brother wasn't being himself. My brother, he loved his children like to death, like anything. Like my brother, like he loved his kids. My brother, he just, the things that he went through for his losing a son and trying to hold it together and everything, it was, it was, it was too much for him to bear. The ripple effect of loss has now changed this family forever. It's hurting my heart to hear that a three-year-old. That, it's just unimaginable. I'm in shock. You know, see a child, you know, an innocent child happen. This happened to him. McClinton's niece tells Fox 8 that her uncle was a hardworking, loving father. His niece went on to say that he loves his kids and, quote, no one can fathom what happened. No one could have ever imagined something like this would happen. Pray for him, pray for the mother, pray for the family. But sometimes you see people every day and you don't know what's going through their mind. Sometimes it's good to ask, you know, you know, if they need to talk, just talk with someone. Don't take it out like this here. This is a tragedy both ways, you know. The guy just last week buried his son. Two days after the senseless tragedy which claimed Carmelo's life, Melvin McClinton Sr. was reportedly still lying in the hospital in critical condition. Viewing witnesses, um, the, the suspect, the father of the baby, still in critical condition in an area hospital. Um, so once, you know, we'll have to see how, how that fares out uh, as a path as to what, what we're going to do with him with a warrant. By that evening, it was announced that he had passed away. Had McClinton Sr. recovered, Police shared that he would have been charged with first degree fatality. Before we start, if you can say and spell your name for me. Thelmus Williams, T H A L M U S. And you are the brother of Melvin, correct? Yes, ma'am. Um, tell me about your brother and your, your nephew. My brother, he loves his children like to death, like anything. Like my brother, like he loves his kids. My brother, he just, the things that he went through for his losing a son and trying to hold it together and everything, it was, it, was, it was too much for him to bear. It was like, my brother was crying out. He was on Facebook, he was talking, he was telling people like, we have to change, we have to be this. You know what I'm saying? We have to do this. We, like, and your, your three-year-old nephew, tell me a little bit about him. Uh, Melo. Man, that's my baby. Man, he, he joy the world, beautiful the boy. Like, like, he used to be saying, baby, let me get that baby dog. My puppy, my dog just had puppies. He used to say, he liked the baby dog, that's my baby dog. He like, he ain't deserve what he what happened. Like my brother just was going through a lot. Tell me your reaction to when you heard the news yesterday, last night, and when you got that phone call. I was there. I, I was. I was. I, I, I was. I was a witness to the whole thing. But I, I, I left out of the house because I know me and my brother. If he mad, he gonna. He going to direct the table or anybody, and I just didn't want to be in it. And when I seen my sister-in-law run out the house, and I heard a pop, and I seen her run out the house, I just, I didn't know what to do. I just didn't know what to do, right? So you were there, and you, you heard the gunshots, you were out, it sounds like you were outside the house. Um, in that moment, I can't even imagine, in your heart, in your head, what was that feeling when, when you heard that sound? It was like losing a child. It was like losing, it was like I knew I lost something. You 
were telling me your brother, um, you guys lost your, your older nephew, Melvin, uh, earlier this month. I'm sure that had not been easy. Even before, before last night, the loss of your other nephew, the loss of your, your brother's son. Tell me how that has impacted you guys. I just recently caught a charge in New Orleans. I went, I went, a Mardi Gras dealer to ride my bike just to have some fun. But by my nephew being ill, I had an illegal gun. I had a gun I just bought. I, I need my protection, so I, I wound up getting a charge for that just recently. Like, and it's, and it's more like, like everything is just like it's. There's a lot of heaviness sounds like going on and with with in the past month uh, I wouldn't I would have never had a gun if my nephew I don't I don't feel I'd be needing a gun but I, I I need protection like I like that that on my family that was hard like we all was on pins and needles we all was trying to like just cope with it I know uh your brother's in the hospital right now. Um, what are you guys looking, like, move, going forward? How is this going to affect you guys long term? You guys God, know? God is with my family. God is showing my family. God is our teacher. God is everybody's teacher. We, we, we all go through situations that teach us and, and, and mold us into who we are. So based on that answer, like, God got us. We good. We straight. Tell me, you were saying your brother is uh, a good man. Tell me a little bit about your relationship with him. Me and my brother got a beautiful relationship. Ever since I came home, it just been like he he, he tried so he, he tried so hard. He he like my brother been through a lot. Like I said, with the with the recent with the with his charge, like he didn't do it. He feel like he feel he feel cheated. Like I gotta go through all this. He feel like all the pressure you put on a human. A human can only take so much. A person can only take so much. Like life is serious. Life is is more than what we just think it is. Like we just we here for each other. Sounds like maybe last night it just it all came to a to that boiling point. My brother, he, he my brother was. He was flashing the whole day, like he was. He didn't get no sleep. He wasn't sleeping. He was like every time my mama would tell him to lay down, he'd be like, "All right, mama, all right, all right, all right." Like he wasn't himself. Like my brother's just, my brother is just the the pressure of all the stuff from him losing his child. He lost his son. He spit in the image of him, but just like him. the male so love, he did his dirt because that's what we taught. We taught what we know. All he knew was the streets. My brother lost his child to the streets. <laughs> Is there anything that you want people to know, to remember about your nephew um, and know about your brother? No, my nephew. No, that my nephew good. My brother good. My nephew was the life of everybody. Everybody loved him. You know what I'm saying? My brother did, he didn't do what he did. He did not have a love. My brother was sick. My brother was going through something. He didn't hurt his child. He didn't want to hurt his child. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank I didn't ask that you wanted us to include? I just want to say it's all about us. It's all about us. Understanding. Everybody has understanding. All everybody is smart. Everybody know better. Like it's about us. Thank you for sharing with us. I I really appreciate you speaking with us today. May the family and friends of Carmelo McClinton and Melvin McClinton Jr. find solace in the happy memories and may their souls rest in perpetual peace. Thank you.